Hello and welcome to this new episode of Daughters of Narcissistic Mothers podcast. So forgive me today, my voice is a little below. I'm going to do my best. Uh, be patient with me. Um, but I didn't want to leave you without an episode this week, so here I am. Um, this episode is also an episode I was looking forward to share with you as it's very close to my heart it's it's something that yeah well it's a message that i feel particularly so i'm looking forward to share this with you so this episode comes from a message i received from a client she was going through something very emotionally challenging and she asked why can't i be normal um, have you ever asked that, you know, within yourself or out loud? Have you ever been jealous maybe of what you consider to be normal people? Maybe other women who seem to have normal relationships with their mothers? I, cer I certainly have many times um, and with plenty of tears to go with it too. But what is normal? Is normal what we see, for example, on social media? The polished snapshots of people's lives? Is that what normal is? Is normal what most people allow others to see? Is that what we consider normal? So let me share something with you. When I started this work, which is over 15 years ago at this point, I thought I was the only one with a dysfunctional family. I thought I, I thought I was the only one hurting and with messy thoughts and with uncontrollable emotions. I thought I was the only one feeling broken, feeling not enough, in need to fake my smiles, not to crumble, in need to pretend all the time. I thought I was the only one with a mother like mine. I thought I was alone. Um, and I could not have been further from the truth. It didn't take me long as I met others within safe containers to realize that I was not alone at all. So many are hurting inside as they're faking smiles, just like I did. So many feel broken and not enough. So many don't know how to deal with the amount of strong emotions that come up. So many have dysfunctional families behind closed doors. So many feel like they need to come up with various strategies and levels of addi addictions to be able to cope. And no judgment here, I'm right there with you. And I'm grateful for every story that has been vulnerably shared with me along the years, thanks to the work that I do. It made me feel less alone. It made me realize normal is an illusion. We're all humans having a very human experience and we have been through a lot in all our unique ways. So what is normal? Does it mean functioning? Does it mean being adapted to the society we live in? As philosopher Jiddo Krishnamurti said, it's no measure of health to be well adapted to a profoundly sick society. And this quote has helped me profoundly. <laughs> it's one of those I bring with me. It's no measure of health to be well adapted to a profoundly sick society. A society where very few are trauma informed, where emotional intelligence is not taught almost anywhere, where most emotions are shamed, where the physical body is shamed or mispromoted, where when you need support, you're either rejected and put in prison or only brought back to functional level. Not happy and safe, but functioning. I just want to bring you an example of this particular point in my own experience. So I remember when about 11 years ago, I went through a period where I was really, really low. I hit quite the low. I had just miscarried early in a pregnancy and I was going through some deep grief as you can imagine and my body felt as if someone took the plug off 
there was no spark I was so tired all the time and with no motivation to do anything speaking to my mother only made it worse as she kindly reminded me that depression runs in the family so that it was in my DNA and I could never escape it which I now know being complete nonsense there are plenty of studies showing that genetics has nothing to do with that but at the time I was vulnerable and I still you know to her um, to that sort of statements from her and I still believe that my mother was so right about everything I idolized her and whatever her opinion was I took so I ended up going to the doctor and he said that there was nothing wrong with me physically which I thought would be good news but he was almost apologetic about it I still remember it he was like I'm so sorry and I had a heart attack when he said I'm so sorry I was like whoa what's coming to me now and he goes no I'm so sorry there's nothing wrong with you and I'm like, well okay <laughs> why are you sorry <coughs> then he said he could label me depressed if I wanted but he also said that I was functioning so there would be no need and that really shocked me so I was functioning meaning I was able to work because I still was going to work yet how much I was hurting inside didn't matter Thankfully, I was able to go to a precious mentor of mine at the time, an amazing herbalist who helped me through it all. Not only with herbs, but also by listening and creating a safe space for me to share. And I am forever grateful for that because that really, truly brought me back. <laughs> we live in a society that celebrates big egos and narcissistic people as high achievers, that celebrates appearance and status over inner happiness, that puts functioning <laughs> before happiness, where comparison is promoted, competition is at the center of education, where to be a great person, you need to win, be first, have the perfect house, the perfect car. A society where it is rare to be in a space where we can actually feel safe. So with all that said, if you don't feel normal, if you don't quite fit in, if you guard your precious heart because you don't feel safe, if your high beautiful sensitivity sometimes feels like a curse, I really get it, I truly feel you. And having a narcissistic mother, a mother that has not nourished you in the ways that matter, that has not been there for you, that has not made you feel loved and accepted as you are, doesn't help in all of it, I get that too. It kind of reinforces all of that, doesn't it? So what is normal to a narcissistic mother? What did she teach you as good, normal behavior? Probably all the things that she thought would make her look good from the outside, which do not include being true to what you're feeling in the moment or coming up, or maybe she thought, she thought you that you're coming up short when compared to the neighbor's daughter, for example, or to your friends or to whoever she's using comparison with. Again, that doesn't include you being fully yourself and being loved and accepted for who you are. With all that that means, the emotions that are within you and all the beautiful, unique traits of who you are. The capacity to truly feel and to get to know yourself in your unique way was not allowed space to develop. Your identity was not allowed space to develop. And when we start becoming aware of all that we have been through, we can suddenly feel abnormal. Like we've been dealt the wrong cards. Like we're the only ones suffering like this. And that it is unjust and unfair. I so get it. And again, society is there to reinforce many of those beliefs for us. There's actually people making an entire career out of telling you how messed up, broken, you are and how they have the one solution that is going to fix you i have come across plenty of those not only in my personal experience but also in my research when i go around researching different things about maternal narcissism some of the stuff out there is scary guys <laughs> there are some people that are amazing and do incredible work and share their wisdom so beautifully and i'm so grateful for them but at the same time, there's some that I would never want anyone to work with. <clears throat> so 
So I want you to know that you're not alone in this. And that there is good news, <laughs> okay? In all of this, there is good news. As being adapted to a sick society is not a good sign, in the same way, feeling out of place and not adapted means you are a powerful code breaker. What does it mean? It means that through the awareness you are gaining, through the wisdom you gathered in your life experience so far, through your precious, precious sensitivity, through your capacity to see through BS with incredible accuracy, through your commitment to yourself and through your inner exploration, you hold the power to break the cycle of pain, not only for yourself, but on a larger scale. Okay, that's important. I want you to really feel that. Take it in. Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. Another quote that I hold dear to my heart and that has helped me a lot in my life, it, uh, life, especially in moments when I felt like I was useless and faulty and broken and uh, no, no good for anything. It reminded me that by going into my inner world and doing the work there, the ripple effect would be seen all around. And after years of doing this, I got a lot of evidence that it works just like that. So you hold the power to change this society for the better. The power to break old patterns that are not helpful anymore and the ones that n never were helpful. As you do that within yourself, the ripple effect spreads around you and into the world. Think about the amount of people you interact with every day. This could be people close to you or all the ones that sometime you sh you know that some that can see something you share on social media for example or or the lady down at the grocery store each time you do or say something it spreads it's each smile that you give has a ripple effect Any time that the vibration that we put out into the world is one of love, we're creating a powerful ri ripple effect. So it's not like, I'm not saying you have to go out and do like crazy big things. Maybe that's what you want to do. That's okay. Maybe you can start your own podcast. Maybe you can, you know, in put your beautiful creations out there. Everything, whatever you do, is going to have an impact when you're coming from the space of love. When you're doing the work that you're doing with yourself that's going to change things but even if you're just more like you know I just want to be in my own house and with my own family and do my own things which is sto is just as powerful I want to I want to I want you to really hear that it's just as powerful because the circle of influence that you have it's big it's way bigger than you think even when you are in your own home with your own family it still spreads, it's energetic, it's not down to how much popularity or how many people you reach, it's an energetic work. So you do hold the power to change things for real. And if you were perfectly functioning and very well adapted within this society, meaning probably numbing, suppressing and distracting every real feeling, because that's what it means to be adapted to this society, Ladies means numbing, suppressing, and distracting. So if you're feeling perfectly at home in society, you're either numbing, suppressing, or distracting. And that's not a criticism, but that's just how it is. Because society as it is at large, in the vast majority of the parts of the world at this point, requires that to be able to fully function in it without sort of looking around and going, whoa, it's seriously fucked up what's going on around here. Okay? So if you were numb and suppressing and distracting every real feeling, you would not be able to access that power to change things for real. So I celebrate each and every one of you that feels out of place right now. That feels not so normal. You are exactly where you need to be. The challenges you're facing right now 
are making you the lead learner for others coming after you. The emotions you're opening up to feel instead of suppressing and distracting are the fuel for change. I invite you to reframe even your past, your childhood. I know there's grief there and that's important to feel. I know there's anger there and that is important to feel too. And beyond all those layers, there's, al there's also a gift there for you. For myself personally, I look at how my mother has been with me and I know how I want to be for my daughters. I use my experience and the pain it caused as fuel to be a different mother, not as a reaction in a subconscious way, but with awareness. My mother is completely unable to empathize and tune in, and she showed me the consequences of what that means. So I've learned the importance of being able to be in tune with myself first and then others. She's showing me what a life spent telling herself a story of victim victimhood can bring, which is nothing good. She's not living a happy life right now. So that taught me to catch patterns of victimhood in my system quickly, not to end up like her. So these are my personal examples, and it's not that I'm sharing them with you because I'm such a great person. I just wanted to share them to sh to sort of inspire in you the fact that while doing the work, while processing all the emotions that are there, there are gifts in the experiences we've been through. And and did we need to go through those experiences? Of course not. You would have been a wonderful person even without those experiences. But there are gifts there and we have been through those experiences so we might as well um, harness those gifts. <laughs> What are the gifts there that are there for you? It may feel challenging to see them now maybe, and I get that. I didn't see them for myself for a long, long, long time either. I was so angry and so disappointed, and I was suppressing my anger, <laughs> my disappointment. Um, so I had to go through those layers first, which is part of the process. Feeling what's there is necessary and important to get to know yourself, to allow your true self to emerge. How often have you been made feel wrong for feeling? How often have you been laughed at or shamed for having strong emotions? So it is very obvious for the system to feel the need to suppress and distract and to feel bad and wrong about feeling grief and anger and sadness and sometimes happy feelings too. Yet it is only by exploring these feelings, forgetting about what normal is, that we get to the truth of who we are. It is only from gently asking, why am I feeling this way right now? That we can move through challenging emotions and get the treasure that is on the other side. The wisdom that is there. Bottom line again is, you're exactly where you need to be right now. And from here, with your courage and devotion to your inner journey, and with the right support along the way, you're bringing in real change. You're bringing in the codes for a new way of living. One that is emotionally intelligent, loving, compassionate, trauma-informed, and real. One that places value on inner wealth as opposed to outer wealth. The richness of the present moment as opposed to distraction. The preciousness of real conscious relating as opposed to superficial interactions. So thank you for feeling. Thank you for not fitting in. Thank you for doing this work. I'm so grateful for all of you, powerful code breakers who have the courage to feel and to go deeper and to come out the far side with wisdom. And that's all from me today. I think I've managed <laughs> without breaking into a fit of coffin, so I'm proud. <laughs> and thank you so much for your patience with my voice today. Um yeah as always reach out share your experience you can email me um, if you have any reflections they're welcome 
I love hearing from you and and keep being the code breakers that you are. I'm sending you lots of love. Bye for now.